day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. You shall go out, leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children, and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you, delivering you up to the synagogue and prisons, 
and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it therefore in your minds, not to meditate beforehand how to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers, and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judah flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter it, for these day are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant, and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled under feet by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs and sun, moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out and leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell in the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> something today we're going to talk about God wants us to work hard. Okay? I wrote some things today that people use in the work. Okay? So let me show you. You know what is this? It's a tool, right? That some people use to work. Like, like a carpenter, a mechanic, or something like that. Yes, your daddy use those? Alright. And actually, this is in a camera. This some people work as a photographer. Like me, I'm a photographer also. So this one, yes, this one is a laptop, right? So people do. Yes, it's a computer. It's you, right? So this one can people use for do some design or fix computers or something like that. Yes, that's great. So some people use these things to work, right? But also. Let me tell you something. Do you have already some job where you have paycheck? Not yet? Okay. Well, not too many of you, right? Well, not you, because you're little, right? But what are some the other jobs that the adults you know they have? What kind of jobs you know the adults have? Like carpenter? Like photographers? Like uh, welders, right? 
So, well, the grown-ups in your life work hard every day to take care of you. They work to make sure you have a place to live and food to eat. I can remember one of my first jobs. Do you want to tell you what it was? I was working on a mechanic shop. I was cleaning and mopping and trying to fix brakes and spark plugs and things like that. So, what well, are some of the jobs you have at home? You want to know? <laughs> okay, is it always easy to work? And sometimes we can be lazy. But God wants us to work hard. We help our families to keep our homes running when we work hard. Let's think about some of the jobs that people do around the church. Well, let me tell you something. Like Cindy, our secretary, she worked hard to have the service folder for us every Sunday. Also, pastors have to work the whole week to visiting people for our shootings and also write the sermon, prepare the sermon for the Sunday. Right? The elders helping the people coming in the church, right? The trust uh, 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 the trustees work hard to see around the church what's wrong and try to fix it, right? Our treasurer is in charge of the money who go inside of the church to help the church keep going and growing and working, right? So let's think what would happen if somebody like Pastor Bose doesn't show up. What do you think what would happen? Or myself? For both of us, don't show up in church on Sunday. Of course, it will be messy, right? Or somebody can do something, right? To run the sermon, but to run the service, right? But, well, we can see that if all these people they don't work hard around in the church, things will be messy and disorganized and confused. But the Bible tells us that it's a good thing that all these people work hard. And the Bible tells us that God wants us to work hard too. On 2nd of Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 11 and 12 said, we hear that some people you do refuse to work. They do nothing and they busy themselves in other people's lives. We command those people to work quietly and earn their own food. In the Lord Jesus Christ we beg them to do this. Wow! This is pretty serious. God says that we need to do our work quietly. That means without complaining or arguing. Please remember not to complain or argue this week when we work at home to help our families. Also, the Bible says this. Brothers and sisters, never become tired of doing good. Let's use this verse as our prayer today. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, bless, please help us never become tired of doing good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Go to your seat. Thank you. We continue with them.
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the Old Testament reading from Malachi chapter 4, which was read earlier. The sermon notes are in the bulletin if you wish to use them to help you follow along. As we approach the end of this church year, next Sunday is the last Sunday in our current church year. So our readings turn our attention, our hearts, and our minds to thoughts of the end times, the return of Jesus, and the day of judgment. When Jesus first came to earth as a human being, God incarnate, he came some two, four thousand years after the first promise, and unfortunately, too many people either missed his coming or simply could not and would not believe in him. Now, as Jesus himself tells us, as was in the days of Noah, as in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so it is today. People are going about their lives oblivious to the fact that the end is coming. And so today, as we have waited only 2,000 years since Jesus promised to return, too many people are oblivious to his imminent return or simply do not believe he will return during their lifetime. Thus, they are eating and drinking, marrying and being given into marriage, thinking that this life will go on and on. When Jesus returns, and I do believe his return will be sooner than we know and sooner than we might imagine, we will be unable to say, hey, I wasn't ready, I didn't know. The day of the Lord's return is coming. We begin at verse 1 of our text. Malachi writes, For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and evildoers will be stubble." The day that is coming will set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord, speaking through the prophet Malachi, warns us of the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, the believers will be judged to heaven, or as Malachi so nicely puts it, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go leaping like calves from a, straw, from a, from a stall. And the other believers will be judged to hell, or again, as Malachi states it, you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet. But notice what Malachi does not say. He does not give us the day nor the hour of the Lord's return. He does not give us this information because he wants us to be ready at all times. He doesn't want us wasting our days up until the day or the day before the Lord's return. But his desire is that we are always ready and that we work to get others ready as well. Malachi continues encouraging us to remember the law. Verse 4. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. We are to remember the laws of Moses, the Ten Commandments, and we are to obey them. Obedience is important, not simply for the sake of obedience. Indeed, obedience will save no one for the simple fact that we cannot be perfectly obedient as God demands in his law. We cannot because we are conceived and born in sin. We are born in imperfection, and with a sin-tainted will, we indeed cannot be perfectly obedient. But yes, Malachi does encourage us, with the Lord's help, to strive for such obedience to the Ten Commandments. We know that true godly obedience flows out as a response of faith. It was Jesus who came to earth, God in flesh, who lived for us, being perfect for us, being perfectly obedient for us in our place, and then taking our sin and paying the price for our sin on the cross. 
Jesus' work, his life, suffering, death, and resurrection, his being perfectly obedient for us in our place is what stirs in us a response of faith, a desire to strive to be obedient even if it is imperfect obedience. Finally, God through Malachi tells us that he will send Elijah, verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord Jesus. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. There are many in the Jewish community today who are still awaiting Elijah to come. Yet Jesus himself tells us that John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. Thus, John the Baptist, in the spirit and power of Elijah, did appear before the great and awesome day of the Lord. John's appearing ushered in Jesus' appearing. Jesus came ushering in the end times. Jesus' birth was a signal that we are now living in the last days. So, God waited some 4,000 years to fulfill his first promise to send a Savior. And now he has waited some 2,000 years and has not yet sent Jesus back a second time. Does that mean he'll wait another 2,000 years or another 1,000 years? We do not know. All we know is that Jesus ushered in the end times, and so we are living in the end times. We are living in the last days of this world. And please understand that to be living in the last days of this world can either mean that the Lord will return, or perhaps what may be more sure is the fact that we will pass on from this world and we will meet the Lord. Either way, the Lord's return or our passing will be the last day and the day we will meet the Lord and stand before him for our own judgment. As I continue to remind you, that day is probably sooner than we know and sooner than we might imagine. Therefore, as we hear, be ready. John the Baptist came preparing the way for Jesus. Jesus came as the Messiah. The awesome day of the Lord was the day in which Jesus took our sins upon himself, suffered, and paid the price for our sins. Jesus died the eternal death penalty of hell for us in our place. But as we know the good news, we know the rest of the story. He did not stay dead, but he rose from the dead. Indeed, we worship a living God. Now today, all those who believe in Jesus will be saved. This exclusive claim is why we Christians are so hated by the rest of the world. Think about it this way. If there are other ways to heaven, then Jesus might be thought of as a lunatic. Because why would he go through what he went through, his suffering and death, if there are other ways to heaven? Or, Jesus is the Messiah. The law of non-contradiction tells us that all the religions of the world cannot be true because they contradict each other. So we are either saved by Jesus or we are not. What does this mean? Our lessons for this morning remind us of what is important in life. That is, that we are to be ready at all times for Jesus' return. And Jesus will return. Just as God kept his first promise to send a Savior even though he took 4,000 years to keep his promise, he did keep his promise. And so he will keep his promise to return. Even though we have waited right now 2,000 years, that does not mean he'll wait another 2,000 years. And should he tarry beyond our own life, the fact of the matter is we will pass on from this world. We will die, and when we die, we will stand before the Lord. So again, I will remind you either way, whether we die or the Lord's return, we will meet the Lord, we will stand before him, and we will be judged at the end of the world. As we approach the end of another church year, as every year, we are reminded that the end will come, again, sooner than we know and sooner than we might imagine. We are reminded that the most important thing for us in this world, in this life, is to be ready for that last day, for our standing before the Lord to be judged. So are we ready? How do we get ready? ready if we're not ready? And how do we stay ready? How do we get ready? We, we know we are ready when our complete faith and trust is in Jesus Christ alone for our salvation. 
If we're not ready, how do we get ourselves ready? Or if we are ready, how do we stay ready? And actually, it's not we who get ourselves ready so much. Rather, it is the Lord who gets us ready. And he gets us ready through the very means he has given to get us ready, his means of grace. Indeed, the means of grace are those means that the Lord uses to come to us to give us the good gifts and blessings he has to give. And those means are the Word, the Bible, the sacraments, holy baptism, the Lord's Supper, and confession and absolution. If you've ever wondered why we have confession and absolution at every, every Sunday, why we have an invocation and a benediction, why we hear the word of the Lord in Holy Scripture, why we have the Lord's Supper every Sunday, it is because it is through these means that our Lord comes to us to bless us, to pour out on us, to shower us with all the good gifts and blessings he has to give. Thus the Lord gets us ready by our making regular and diligent use of these means of grace. We make regular use of the means of grace by being in divine service whenever offered. We make diligent use of the means of grace by being as the bereaved, by checking out what is preached and taught against God's word, and indeed making use of his word on our own. Also, our Lord gets us ready by our right attitude in divine service, that is, our attitude of coming to be given to. The dictionary defines worship as something we do for our God who demands or desires that we do something for him. Indeed, God does not need anything from us, which is why what we do on Sunday morning is not worship but divine service. We come to divine service first and foremost to be given to by God. Our divine service is permeated with the means of grace because God has chosen to come to us through these means to give us the gifts and blessings he has to give. Thus we come to divine service to be given to by God and then to respond as he moves us to respond. And our response of faith is to offer our hymns of prayer, praise, and thanksgiving, to offer our prayers and to offer our offerings, gifts, tithes, and first fruits. But notice again and again and again, it all points us to Jesus who does all and gives all. We know we are ready when we know we are getting it right when it all points to Jesus. Listen to your speech, how you talk, how you say things, how you speak about the Lord and your relationship with him, your faith and so forth. Do you speak about yourself and what you are doing or think you are doing for the Lord? Or do you speak about the Lord and all he has done and all he gives and what he continues to do for you? When our lives and our speech and our actions point to Jesus running the show, then we are ready. And our lives bear witness of the faith that the Lord has given us and put into our hearts. Most of us don't like to talk about the end of the world or about our own death, but these things are important because we need to be ready. To not be ready could mean eternal death, which is hell. But to be ready means eternal life in heaven. Now more than ever then is the time to be ready, to make sure we are ready, to get ready and to help others be ready. So my prayer is that you are ready. My prayer is that you will continue to make use of the means of grace so that you may continue to stay ready. My prayer is that your life will serve to help others to be ready. So that ultimately when we stand before the Lord, and we will stand before the Lord, he will look at us and he will look at our lives, which say, to God be the glory, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus for life everlasting. Amen. Having heard the word of the Lord, we respond to that word by confessing our faith together this morning. We will do so with the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed on page 159. Please rise. We confess our faith together. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and cross fire, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church.
remain standing for our prayers. In our prayers for this morning, I will pray, Lord, in your mercy and message to respond to our prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, hear your people as they pray and grant them all things needful and beneficial according to your gracious promise in Christ our Lord. Pray to you, O Lord, for you have done marvelous things and laid bare your arm to save your people. Deliver your church from all her enemies and from those who battle against your word. Sustain us through the fears and trials of these later days and raise up faithful pastors who will secure your people in faith through the ministry of your word and sacraments. Bless those preparing for full-time church work and considering church work vocations. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, you, O Lord, for you have remembered your steadfast love to your people and redeemed them through the blood of your only Son. Strengthen your people in their baptismal identity as your children and in their vocation of worship, witness, love, and mercy works. Bless our congregation and those whom you call and gather here by your word and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy are you, O Lord and mighty. You will judge the world with righteousness and your people with equity. Bless us with good and faithful leaders and government to serve your purposes, defend your people, punish the evildoers, and encourage virtue. Make us especially mindful of those least able to defend themselves, especially the unborn. Raise up those who will call, serve the cause of peace among the nations. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless the Father, we pray for Allie that she may return home soon. Thus we pray for the Lowitzer family that you grant strength of faith in Christ, that they may bear upon you this burden and be at peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless the Father, we pray for healthy children, for Carolyn and Chloe, for safety for those in the military, Anthony, Brittany, Joel, and Derek. For those with special needs, we pray, loving Father, the Ganado family, William, Guy, Maria, Dalton, Sean, Garrett, Georgian, Ron, and Barry, that you would keep them steadfast in trouble and comfort them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Faithful Lord, you have given us rich and abundant promises and promise to be with us in all adversity and need. Be with those who cry to you in any need of body, mind, or soul, and grant them grace sufficient for all their needs, especially Olivia, Christine, Howard, Trevor, William, John, Virginia, Kim, Gloria, Arthur, Scott, Tammy, Vic, Wim, Riley, Leon, Linda, Margie, Harold, Krissa, Paul, Kathy, Joanne, Lorraine, Miranda, Betty, Clarence, George, Josephina, Maria, Mary, Lauren, Odette, Sharon, Dan, Eileen, Pat, Cameron, Matthew, Charlie, David, Bobby, Marion, Janet, Karen, and all those we now name in our hearts before you. Deliver them from illness according to your will and grant them to rest upon the firm foundation of your grace and favor to keep them through the days of their trial. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, we worship you, O Lord, for all your loving kindness shown to us in Christ our Savior. Deliver us from fear as we witness the signs of the times and make sober judgments in the face of so many vexing concerns. Remind us that through, though the nations rage and the powers press against the church, this is our opportunity to give witness to the word that does not change and the mercy that is our hope in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, we give you thanks, O Lord, for the gift of family, and we pray you to bless the homes in which your people dwell. Thank them to be places of blessing and peace where your word is front and center and the faith is preserved and passed on to children and grandchildren. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, Holy Lord, you are the strength of your people. Grant to us strength that we may not give into temptation or be caught up in evil, but endure through your grace to the day of Christ's return. We pray that we would be found holy and blameless by the power of his grace when you bring the dawn of the last day and lead us into the place where there is no night, no darkness, and no death. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Welcome you, Lord. Bring us to receive with thanksgiving and faith the most blessed food of Christ's flesh for the life of the world and his blood that cleanses us from all our sins. Bless us with unity of faith and harmony of doctrine and life. By this blessed sacrament, equip us with all the gifts of the Spirit and bring to harvest the rich fruits of the Spirit in the lives of your people, both now and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, oh, blessed Lord, you have promised never to abandon us and always to provide all that we need for this day and for eternal life. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, hear the prayers of your people and grant them all the good things for your mercy's sake. To you, the eternal God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glory now and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we gather the first two tithes and offerings as the offering be it basket to be passed on. If you find a record of fellowship book in your pew, please sign it and pass it on. We receive our offering. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really good, right, and solitary that we should at all times and other places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, the Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glory and resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
blessed are you, Lord, of heaven and earth. For you have a mercy on those whom you create, and send you only begotten Son into all flesh, to wear our sin and be your Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the abiding sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gather in the name of the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Rents us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful with the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be our glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our Christ in the night when he was betrayed to pray, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. He soon remembers of me. In the same way also he took the cup after the supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is said for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise for the number of minutes. <coughs> Thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we glory you, God, on your mercy. You will strengthen us through the same in the faith toward you and the fervent love to one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon your favor and give you peace.
Welcome, glad to have all of you worshiping with us today. Uh, in two weeks, we will have our usual uh, Thanksgiving, uh, Wednesday, Thanksgiving Eve service. We'll have a noon service and an evening service. In the evening service, 7 30, you should be uh, getting information about that. And then uh, the Lenten season will actually be, or the Advent season will begin the next week right after that. Uh, and as usual, we'll have Carrie in at 6 30. Come and pick your favorite hymn that we never get to see at 7.15, and then the service will start at 7.30 for the Wednesdays during Advent. Uh, other announcements, we have a, a voters meeting right after. You've got Melissa, you've got your hand up right here. Boy, Scott, you got that just right. Um, I happen to have found a gold tone hoop earring outside the gym walking into Bible class this morning. We've had several events, activities, funeral, luncheons, and such. So um, I've tried to touch base with the people that I could see. Um, if it's not yours, I'm going to actually Put place it, it in the office. But I did post it on our Facebook, uh, St. Matthew's page. So if someone happened to have lost it, it's about a penny, it's the size of a penny. Uh, that's any helpful. But if, if you know someone who's uh, has lost an earring. Just let me know. Thank you. Yep. 500 people are going to come forward now. And find <laughs> Other announcements that need to be made? Go and be sure free.